Hello everyone, this is LockOS and welcome back to Star Citizen for Invictus Launch Week 2954. So, today we have RSI, Origin Jump Works, Argo Astronautics, and I do believe we have one other smaller manufacturer, uh, Consolidated Outland, uh, popping up as well. So, for our tour today, we're just going to go around and Really, from here on out, with a lot of these ship tours, unlike last year, I'm just going to go ahead and just hit up the uh, big one, the big uh, to do ones. So, anything that's new or kind of important. So, first off, we're going to start off with the RSI Polaris. This is not flyable, but they figured for the show floor, they would put it in just to showcase how much work they've done on it, because they do believe this is the completed exterior. So, the uh, Polaris. The bridge is up front. Once the game unfreezes, there we go. So that is the bridge up there for the Polaris. Now I do believe they also blocked it out so they don't want you to see on the inside, which is fine. But there is the Polaris. There's the bridge. <laughs> there is the underside turret. I see you have like one turret and the on the uh, front. I do believe near the waist on the upper side of the ship there are two more turrets. But you have these massive landing gear that are reminiscent of the 800, of the uh, 890 jumps landing gear. Just these massive gears. And then all the way here at the back. You also have this uh, quad turret. That looks like it's a remote turret that you can use also to fend off any attackers from behind. Now to really see the ship in action, we're going to have to go to uh, one of these ships here and then use the uh, remote control view to go up high enough to actually see into that ship. So. I'm going to pick a, a Constellation series real quick that I is near and dear to my heart. The Constellation Taurus. I'm going to climb into her. Sit down in a random seat. And then use our F4 view to actually get a good look at the Polaris from the top. There we go. So you can see just how massive the Polaris is compared to even the already large constellation. As the camera gets stuck on every single little side thing. So you can see uh, there's the bridge at the top and the right, and you do have two turrets up on the top. So you have three turrets that look like they're more anti-ship turrets towards the front, because they have uh, laser cannons instead of laser repeaters, and you have the anti-fighter turret in the rear, which makes sense. You also have that flat gray depression in the upper side of the ship. Oh, let's see if I can't get this to behave. When you behave right here, this whole section right here, okay. let's behave. Yeah, this whole section right here actually is the uh hangar bay for the Polaris, so you can actually store a fighter-sized ship in there. And you can service it and then deploy it from there. So you, so you want to carry at least one fighter-sized vehicle in there. And at the very back, let's 
let's see here. All right, we'll just do that. Do you? So, going back from the hangar bay up towards the top, it looks like there's also a missile turret towards the back to also defend the ship from the rear using uh, missiles. So you have missiles and uh, repeaters in the back to defend against fighter targets, and then you have all those laser cannons up at the front to engage larger vehicles, as well as the torpedo bay that the players has towards the nose. So that is the players from the outside. Nothing really of note there because it's still in progress. Uh, I do believe that they have said multiple times, and I do believe they're on track, that the Polaris should release by the end of the year. So hopefully uh, when IAE rolls around and we're back in... Uh, yeah, when the IAE rolls around and we're back in uh, Microtech, this will actually be a ship that we can take a tour of because it's pretty massive. And I'm quite sure that would literally probably take like a 15, 20 minute tour just to cover the players. Because it's going to be the largest combat ship that we have in game. So, taking a quick tour of the Taurus. This is a ship that I highly do recommend if you're looking for a ship that you want to possibly multi-crew. But if you but still relatively but still feel relatively comfortable uh, manning yourself. You could definitely use the Constellation Taurus to run solo ops it just this is probably the maximum that you want to actually have for a ship that you want to run solo anything larger than this and it just comes at too unwieldy but the main reason i would recommend the taurus over the base constellation is it is cheaper i believe than the base constellation but you actually get more cargo space than the base constellation at the cost of losing the uh, attached fighter bay so you won't have the Merlin that attaches and detaches from the back. However, that's not a big loss because in order to operate the Merlin, you need to actually get into it. So as a single operator, if you want to have this cargo, if you want to use this as a single person vessel, you're not going to be able to get into the fighter bay and still fly the ship. Plus, the, I, the main draw for me for the, the uh, Constellation Taurus is you have this extended cargo bay back here and this can actually fit uh, two cyclones fit two cyclones you could almost fit uh, the anvil spartan series it's long enough but it's barely just too narrow enough to fit that's kind of the depressing thing is it would be this would be the uh, ultimate ship to carry a uh, anvil spartan or any of the anvil series of um, ground vehicles but alas, you cannot. But other than, but still, this is a massive amount of cargo. I do believe this has, I think, 174 STU cargo for the Taurus. So that is a large amount of cargo for a single person uh, ship. And it's also a sealed cargo container with a cargo grid that you can also use to transport a wide range of vehicles. And even potentially multiple vehicles. So Constellation Taurus is my recommendation for a single is my uh, one of my recommend, recommended ships for uh, for sale for today. I do believe it's also a ship that is on sale at all times. So you can definitely come here to the IAE show floor, get in there, try it out. Now on this side of the event hall, I'm gonna run over here. So this ship right here is uh, high, as a ship I can possibly recommend. It's not something I would highly recommend per se for a combat starter ship, but you can definitely consider it as, an, as a lower cost option. The Aurora LN 
is the basically the military upgrade is the uh, more combat focused upgrade to the Aurora series. It comes automatically equipped with four guns, whereas the base variants of the Aurora only come standard with two guns with the option to mount two more. And the missile uh, pylon rack up above has been upgraded so that it can carry um, large, it can carry more missiles. So you can carry double the amount of missiles, which is unique to the LN variant, and it comes standard with uh, four guns instead of two. Other than that, it's a fairly bog standard Aurora. You have your bed in the back. The stairs, by the way, do work. You can like climb up them. There we go. You have your pipe get your pilot seat right there. There's your pilot seat, there's your cockpit, and there's your bed that you can log out at. Now the only reason I can't really recommend the ship highly as I want to is that this, as I get down and crouch, um, this back here is the cargo grade for the Aurora, and I don't believe this works freely. So you, and while you might have a uh, box that you can possibly put in there and it looks like it would fit, I don't believe it attaches to this cargo grade quite just yet. So can't recommend unfortunately, the uh, Aurora LN fully, because its cargo functionality isn't really uh, fleshed out, but it's still a valid ship. If you definitely want to just upgrade your Aurora, this is definitely an option. However, you might want to upgrade to, if you, especially if you're really focused on just combat without any need for carrying any sort of cargo for box missions, I would actually recommend a different ship over that... Um, Aegis is going to uh, have called the uh, Gladius. Still, it's a fine option. The Mantis, by the way, that's uh, one of the introduction uh, quantum EED ships. Um, if you want to do that, go ahead. It's just you'll intercept the if you inter if you do intercept a ship. Um, good luck fending it off against it by yourself. And that just this. So this is definitely a one of those group ships that you're definitely going to need other players in order to make this effective. And you're definitely this is definitely a teamwork. Focus ship. Now we get to the uh, the Lynx, uh, Medivac, and regular Ursa. And these are all basically little um, APCs. Uh, the Lynx right here is a luxury variant. Just pop in real quick. So there you go. It's nice. It's luxurious. I don't know why the, the luxury uh, vessels here are part of the uh, military convention, but there they are. The regular standard Ursa is pretty nice. And I do believe it also comes as part of certain packages uh, in game. So keep in mind that you you might get a, you actually might get an Ursa as part of a package. Also have fold up seats, so you can either have four crew members or four people in the back down here, or if you want to, you can fold the seats up and gain some cargo room. So you can easily have like two people back here and like two SEU of cargo space to store mission boxes. So you can definitely use this as a um, group mission vehicle. Definitely have, uh, it's definitely armored so you can get into the area relatively safely. You can pack up your, can put your loot in boxes in right there. You have your uh, seats for extra crew members and you have a driver and a co-driver or co-pilot. And then you also have a turret up top to give you a little bit of firepower to deal with threats. So it's definitely a um, one of the more useful ground vehicles. And the Ursa series does fit into a lot of vehicles including the Constellation series. For a uh, medical evacuation and just having a medical ground vehicle, we finally got the Ursa Medivac. Tier 3 medical bed in the back, so you can lie down, take, lie down, fix your Tier 3 injuries as well as restore health and um, fluids and nutrients. Look at the medical, little medical area over here, especially if you have uh, rifle racks and stuff like right over there. You have a uh, jump seat for 
a dedicated uh, met combat medic to do the extraction and patch them up. You have your little medical terminal, squeeze the neural nice, put an axis back there, and then also you have your driver and co-pilot. Pop up there, there you go. So it's definitely uh, very much a utility vehicle in the line of the Ursa Rover, but this one's more medical focused. So it's definitely a good option if you're doing a, if you have a medical org or you're trying to go into the medical gameplay, where you want to get a ship like this, deploy the ship out of range of enemy combat, and then drive in with the Ursa ground vehicle, a uh, bit more stealth here, and then also you can um, engage uh, FPS targets like uh, other infantry pretty easily with this. And then sneak out once you got your uh, man who's downed. And come on, game, unstick. There we go. So that is new to um, Invict. This is that is new for Invictus this year. Here's some medevac. Definitely would recommend it if you're in the medical gameplay and you don't have a medical ship as is, or you just want to expand your range of ships, range of ground vehicles that could do medical vehicle medical. Uh, contracts and the like. The uh, Scorpion back there, uh, it's Earth size heavy fighter. I don't really recommend it. It's kind of expensive for what it is, especially the EMP variant because your second, your uh, backseater, all you can do really is operate the EMP right now and that's not the most efficient or effective thing in the world for just to bring someone along to do. That is the Anvil F8 Lightning, which is RSI's, which is uh, Anvil's heavy fighter. That is not really available for in game to purchase. Um, do you have to actually do? Uh, there was a quest line or an event where you actually had to like earn the right to purchase it, but it's something you just like can't naturally purchase. Whole bunch of military components over here. Actually, walk up to them and there we go. We should be able to buy them. past the recruitment office. There it is right there. Sometimes I will admit it's a little bit hard to navigate this area sometimes just because these large ships sometimes block view of the other event halls, so it happens. But thankfully, now we're getting out of, I believe now we're going to get out of RSI's hair, and we're actually going to view the other manufacturers here at the IAE, or Invictus. Run, little man, run. So here we have the Mustang Delta. Uh, this is a combat variant of the Mustang. It has a uh, twin turret up front with two repeaters, and it has an additional two repeaters on the wings for, again, a total of four guns. And unlike the, uh, and a counterpart to the um, RSI, RSI's Aurora LN, or Aurora Legionnaire, the uh, Mustang Delta, instead of missiles, has rocket pods. So that's its special weapon. Now I will say that the between the two, I prefer the Delta, Mustang Delta. It's a bit more maneuverable than the uh, Aurora LN. Uh, it loses the cargo space, but you really don't... That the cargo space of the LN isn't really that effective for much, so you're not losing a whole lot there. Uh, you gain a whole lot of extra visibility for the uh, in this cock with this cockpit, which is very important in dogfights. Uh, lose sight, lose the fight, and all that. Also, with the uh, with the Mustang frame, you're getting more maneuverability. So this is a much, I believe, a much better option than the LN for combat, but it's still not what I would pick if you're going uh, into a pure fighter role, um, but it's still a valid option, especially if you want to uh, save a little bit of money. Um, you don't want something that's like, overly powered, overly super powerful. To start off with, uh, the Mustang Delta is a really good option if you don't want to spend as much money to get a uh, Gladius later on.
Over here we have the uh, Argo astronaut ships. We have the SRV, which is a tractor uh, beam ship, and literally just tractor beams uh, ships around using that attachment at the back. Nothing too interesting. Well, nothing too interesting yet with that, but you can do that in game right now. And you have the uh, Argo, uh, the Argo cargo right here with a little bit of a cargo bay back here. You have the Argo tractor beam over here, the MPUV tractor beam unit that has the utility mounts to mount the uh, tractor beams. And then you have the Argo um, uh, personnel, which has this uh, rescue pod back here. And then you have like eight people, you can carry it. Uh, you can either use this as a um, frame to actually pick up these uh, uh, rescue pods, because that's what these are, or you can just mount the rescue pod empty and then use it to carry people up and down and all around. Now, the Argo series right here, uh, they're not really meant for traveling around the verse, per se. They're meant to more or less be stored on larger ships and then used as a utility craft. So think of, like, the Idris has a hangar bay specifically for the Argo MPUV. Uh, I do believe a Hercules can possibly carry one of these. But that's the kind of ship you're talking about whenever you're thinking about these Argo MPUVs or, like, things like that that have a dedicated hangar bay that could fit a small utility craft like that. The players, for instance, could probably fit one of these um, on the side. But I definitely wouldn't recommend getting this ship unless you already have like a large ship that you can fit it in and you're going to actually use it. It's cheap, yes, but it's not super uh, useful unless you have a larger ship to carry it around. Because it has no quantum drive. Now we have two Origin ships. We have Origin's combat-focused variants of the 100 and 300i series. Nothing too interesting here, um, other than the fact that these have usually a couple bit more, yeah, but these, these two have more missiles than their civilian and base counterparts. So that's pretty much all there is to those two. So if, you're, if you like the Origin series ships and you want some, uh, for their style and for their creature comforts, because these both have beds, but you, with, but you want something with a little more firepower, then you can definitely go with those two. But if you're, but if you want something that's a dedicated pure combat fighter, can't really recommend those two. And that's it for that haul. Now I do want to go down to the Hall of Viewer, and I'm going to make sure I put a cut into the video here, and I'll meet you back at the Hall of Viewer, where we're going to go over what ships are available in the Hall of Viewer, and for, that are coming in the far off future, because unfortunately, these are going to be quite a bit away. All right, everyone, we're back here in the, the Hall of Viewer. So, let's see, we're just going to line that contract. So, welcome back to the Hall of Viewer, everyone. So, here we go. Uh, here we have a whole bunch of ships that are still in concept that are going to be on sale today. Now, there's not all the concept ships that are going to be on sale. There's a couple of, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there are more ships that they don't have Hall of Viewer um, frames for because these are 3D models. That they have to create. So I wouldn't be surprised if there were a couple of 3D models that they have yet to create or even have the room to put down here. So this is not an exhaustive list of what's going to be on the store in concept. So begin with the Origin G12A is a light 
combat vehicle that Origin uh, has made. And it's primary, I believe it's only armament or missiles, so that's going to be an interesting little scout vehicle uh, for it to only have missiles. I'm not quite sure if I would get it just because it's, they haven't even talked about when it would be released. Uh, it keeps on getting mentioned, but that has no definitive release date. Now the ship I want to, uh, I'm looking forward to, but it's a ship that I want to earn in verse. I'm purposely at this point earmarking ships to earn in verse to give me something to, uh, to earn and look forward to. We have the RSI Perseus, and the Perseus here is a gunboat. So this is similar in size to the Polaris up above, but it, whereas the Polaris has missile armament, the Perseus instead has massive railgun armament. And I like the idea of using the railguns more than the missiles, uh, probably because missile gameplay right now in Star Citizen and Honestly, for a good long while, it's kind of iffy. You kind of like sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't. Plus, uh, restocking missiles is more expensive than gun ammo, so there's that too. And the Perseus also does not have a hangar bay, which is kind of what I want. It's not that I don't want fighters; it's just I don't want a hangar bay that fits just a single ship. So I think the Perseus overall is uh, going to be my uh, choice of heavy uh, corv like light corvette or a cap ship that I'm going to be looking forward to earning in game. Uh, kind of expensive, definitely something I don't want to buy with real money, um, but it's definitely something I want to earn in-game. And lastly, for ships that are visible, we have the Zeus Mark II MR. The Zeus Mark II is slated for Star Citizen 4.0, and I do believe it's quite a long, uh, along the way, so I also remember that they did specifically say at last year's CitizenCon, they want to get this ship done within a year, so that would be fine. That'd be perfect if they get it for 4.0. It'll be within that year time frame. So the Zeus Mark, uh, the Zeus Mark II MR, is going to be a light, uh, light fast uh, courier courier ship. Uh, decent bit of guns on it. Uh, get in there, do some. Con it can do some like uh, light combat. Um, and then salvage the loot wreck and put it in the rear uh, vehicle. But until we get it in game, well, we're not quite sure of its final capabilities. But it's definitely a constellation competitor in the sense that uh, it's going to be roughly the same uh, uh, size ish, roughly the same crew amount. It's just different um, roles. And that's it really for everything here on the show floor for the hologram viewer. I'm going to exit out of here and say this has been Lock OS and Star Citizen Alpha 2.3.23.1 for Invictus uh, Day 1 and 2. Next uh, time I join you, it'll be uh, another batch of smaller manufacturers, including Crusader and Tumblr. And those are always fun to go around and see what they have in store. And until then, this is Lock OS. Signing out.